Wah, wah, wow. <laughs> Knowing. I had an elaborate intro planned for this work of art, but I found something better. More like someone better, Nicolas Cage, everybody! Yeah! Thank you, thank you. Uh, hi. My name's Nicolas Cage. This is Knowing. And, uh... It came out in 2009. You know, honestly, I don't even remember being in this. I don't even think I was in this mo- Oh, there I am. Well, this is awkward. Uh, it looks like a disaster movie. Uh, looks pretty cool. Oh, Rose Burns in it. She's attractive. And, uh, you know, this is one of those movies that, uh, look, I'm sorry, I don't remember any of this. So knowing. <sighs> knowing is directed by Alex Proyas. It is written by four people. Four people. Can you imagine four people sitting around a table trying to write a disaster film? That's problematic! It stars Nicolas Cage, Chandler Canterbury, Rose Byrne, and Laura Robinson. This movie review was brought to you by my former co-worker Lucas Bueno. Um, props, bro. This was his suggestion for his least favorite movie for me to review. And gosh, you guys know how to pick them, man. I mean, if you got a bad movie, or a good movie, even. It's well done so far. And I, it's, I guess, just get started with the characters. The characters are stupid. Check out this scene. You got Nicolas Cage, who had just discovered a piece of paper that has numbers on it that correlate with dates, locations, and casualties. So essentially, it's either a satanic fortune cookie or it's Helen Keller's grocery list. Okay, all right, fine, it's too far, it's too far. I just, I say things I don't mean when I'm angry. And I'm angry. So anyways, Nicolas Cage's character, John Kessler, who is a college professor, he just figured out what this piece of paper means, and he decides to go and call the cops. Listen to this phone call. New York. How may I direct your call? The attack will take place tomorrow at the corner of Lafayette and Worth Streets. Cordon off the area from midnight. Are you clear on that? Sir, let me patch you through to our... Please, do exactly as I say or many people will die. This is not a crank call. Sir. Now imagine if you were on the other end of that phone call. 911, what's your emergency? The attack will take place tomorrow at the corner of Lafayette and Worth Streets. Uh, this is not a crank call. Off the area Sir, are you clear on that? Uh, okay. So, uh, what what is it that you want? Please do exactly as I say, or many people. What will is die. it that you? This is not a crank call. It. Yeah, we're gonna need a perimeter. Several times does this happen. Our protagonist is a moron and a terrorist. Of course, the movie isn't aware of that because this movie is so unaware of itself that it is frustrating beyond belief and the chemistry between the characters is is so sloppy and convoluted da this is not a crank call and of course right after that st <laughs> that phone call he goes straight to the police where the perimeter has been set up Why hasn't this intersection been sealed off? Excuse me? I said, why hasn't this intersection been sealed off? Didn't you get sir, a tip off about sir, the attack? Sir, please calm down. If you'll accompany me, we'll get this matter taken care of. <laughs> sir! Stop! Hey, stop! Oh good, I lost them. Do our characters not think anything through in this movie? You just got done saying this do exactly as I say or many people will die to the police and then you proceed to approach the police with this why hasn't this intersection been sealed off didn't you get sir, the tip off about sir, the attack please calm okay bye sir, 
the meeting between John Kessler and the lady, I don't remember her name, and I do not need to when the movie sucks as bad as this one. The lady is the daughter of the first person that came across or who made this letter. They go all possessed and they start writing numbers down. <laughs> Anyways, her mother put it into a time capsule and it was taken out of the time capsule by John Kessler's character and that's how he got a hold of the paper. Now he's going to the daughter of that person that first wrote those numbers down. So how do you approach this? So I don't know. I'd probably go and get out of the car and maybe, oh, well, I guess we're following them. And for a moment there, when they're at the museum, I was like, okay, that was kind of clever, you know, using your kids for your cause. I mean, who hasn't done that? I'm being serious. It was actually pretty clever. So they get to talking, and it seems like the chemistry, it, it, you know, it works. It's like, whatever, yeah, it's like kind of like a first date. It's going, wait, well, wait, what are you doing? No. Nick, shut up. Shut up! Gosh, dang it! And then when Rose Byrne's character dies, <laughs> that was hilarious. The characters also start off fairly interesting. It's just when crap goes down, they start to become disposable, useless. For instance, when Nicolas Cage is running toward where something really, really bad is going to happen. He's frantic. He's freaking out. He runs into this train car. And then he decides to pick the frightened mother to say... Get off the train. Why? What's wrong? Just take the baby and get off the train. Hey, what's your problem, pal? I'm just gonna keep going. John? Where are you? When he decides to go to his first meeting with one of these great calamities that's about to occur, he goes to his estranged sister and drops off his kid and tells them, don't watch the news. No explanation is given. None. They don't know about the piece of paper. They don't know that he's about to run into a supposed disaster. Just imagine you had no information and someone walked up to you with their kid and you don't really like them, leaves the kid and says, don't watch the news. Um, suicide alert. But of course, none of the characters do anything about it because they're all idiots. How does that make sense? Ever. People made this. Not only that, four freaking writers wrote this. The acting is probably the only thing in this movie that was fine. It seems like the actors were just doing what they were told to do, which is what you're supposed to do. And when I first saw the grandmother that wrote all the stupid numbers down, I was like, that looks a lot like Rose Byrne. Oh my gosh. It's Rose Byrne. That's impressive. Especially since the little girl wasn't half bad of an actress. The dialogue. The dialogue isn't half bad. I mean... It's just that the characters just say really stupid things. So it's it's not so frustrating because the characters are stupid. So naturally they have to say stupid things. What's frustrating is that they were written that way. The story. Here we go. What's up with this? I have never seen more conflicting tones in a movie. I mean, this thing established from the beginning that it's a science movie. That is the tone that it established. So when the audience gets a surprise ending that it's a religious movie, how do you think people are going to react? I mean, you're talking about arguably the most controversial subjects colliding together at the very end of the movie. People are already frustrated because the movie was stupid as it was. What's some of this? But then you just have to put a little bit of dookie on top of the cherry. <sighs> and religious ending aside, the ending doesn't even make sense. It's not even a happy ending. Because you know what happens? as far as I can tell from the information or lack thereof that they gave us, everybody dies and it's over. 
and only the two kids end up surviving, and then they become the Adam and Eve of another planet? Where's the fun in that? They have to repopulate the Earth. That is responsibility to the freaking max. Predictability. Uh, duh. To a fault, of course. The morale of the film. Be more like Jar Jar Binks. Ruin as much as you possibly can for yourself and others. Even not being a huge hater of Jar Jar Binks, I still can logically see that he ruined everything for the Republic. He destroyed it, and he brought the rise of the Empire. Just like our characters stupidly ruined everything for themselves, as well as ruined everything for us as the audience. So who's to blame for this movie? The writers, honestly. I mean, usually when you have more than two writers on a film, then it's going to be convoluted. You can't change that. That's why it's best when you have one master, one director. Not two directors, not four writers, not five producers, not seven studios. It just, it becomes a mess. So where would I put this movie on the list? Uh, well, let's see. I'd say number 472 on the list. I have no regrets giving that rating because the movie's terrible. But guys, I have the best news ever. If you haven't seen this movie yet, I've got the code, okay? It says that this disaster is going to happen... Oh. It already happened. Oh, shoot. What's up with this? Well, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, then blessed be your soul. If, if you did, I'm, I'm so sorry that I didn't get this review to you much, much sooner. Because honestly, there aren't that many reviews on YouTube for this movie. In fact, I, I'd venture to say I'm the only one. <laughs> I, I mean, at least I can die knowing that I did the right thing. And then there will be no afterlife for me, and my, my kids will become the next Adam and Eve for another planet. You know, I think I'll switch churches. Nonetheless, tell me about all of your torturous memories and experiences at this movie below because I absolutely care to know. And don't forget to subscribe by hitting the daggum subscribe button and definitely hit that little bell on the side so that that way you get notifications about more face-explodingly awesome videos such as this one. And I will see you next time on Movie Slayer. This is not a crank call. Ding.